Hey friends, welcome to my kitchen and today I'm going to be pickling some beets. I got beets out of the garden yesterday and I can't wait to start canning them so that we can have them at Thanksgiving and Christmas and all of the other times that we just want to open a jar. So this is super easy. If you haven't made it before, you're going to be blown away how simple it is. So follow me and let's get going. So I just got all of my beets picked from out in the greenhouse beds, except for a few that I want to use for meals. I left like half of one of the beds, but I got them all cut up with the tops taken off and any black marks on them. And now I just have to do some trimming like here and this, getting the skin off. But I should be able to do that tonight so that tomorrow I can get out my jars and start the pickling process. So I can't wait. I absolutely love pickled beets. Before I ever do any kind of canning, I like to clean up, do all my dishes, clean off all the counters, clean my floors, do all the different surfaces. So I have a bunch of tidying and things to put away and then I will sanitize all of my countertops and my sink before I even think about getting all of my equipment out. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to wash and sterilize all of my jars and rings and get out some seals. Mostly I like to use wide mouth jars because they're the easiest to find the seals for the lids so I find that these are way better so I got out as many as I can I have a couple of the smaller ones just in case I need more but I don't I did way more jars than I ever need because I don't like having to sterilize them at the last minute so I always do lots and then they're kind of ready for the next thing they just need a rinse anyway and the garden's in full swing so there's tons of things that are going to be getting pickled or canned so more the merrier for the jars these I picked um, yesterday they sat overnight I just gave them a rinse so I'm just gonna peel them and kind of get any weird spots or strings off of them first and I do have a bunch more out there if I need more to fill some jars but that I pulled out one whole garden bed full some of them are a little bit small but I like them really tender like that. I don't like when they get old and woody. So that's the very first step. And I also get a little pot of water going on the stove and I put some lids in it. And now I'm gonna go downstairs and dig out my water bath canner. I just washed my favorite pot, my water bath canner, and the rack and the lid. And I've got my favorite star fret big um, pot out so I can get the beets sliced up and cooking. And way bigger quantity of beets. And I might even go get more out of the garden if I need to. But I've got my hot soapy water here for everything. I've already scrubbed this all. And now I'm just going to fill it halfway with water. And then I'm going to fill that other pot right there. Um, to over about a few inches higher than whatever the beets come to after I chop them up. And then I'm going to cook them in some salted water until they're tender crisp. So now I'm just going to chop up all of these beets and I'm going to take off any kind of 
strange string or whatever it is. Aren't these beautiful beads? Fresh from the garden. Oops, I wasn't supposed to go there. And yeah, chop them all relatively the same thickness and pop them in my big pot. And once I'm done all of this, I'm going to cook them until they're tender, crisp. I don't do these perfect either. I kind of, they're going to cook more in the jars as well. But I definitely get any weird stuff off the sides. Like I missed this one with the little top. Don't want any of that. But I want them the same, relatively the same thickness. Because that's what's going to make it cook evenly. So I wouldn't worry too much about the skin. I would just get off any of this, any marks on them or black spots or strings because rel most of the skin is gonna come off easy after it's been cooked. So right now, don't worry about the skin, just get any yucky marks off and any strings or any black spots. left and then I will weigh this and see if we have eight pounds yet because I'd like to have eight pounds because the way the recipe works out with the vinegar so let's see and hopefully I don't have to go back to the garden and pull some more out but I will if I have to okay I've got my little scraps for the birds which I'm happy about and I've got my pot of beets and I know that this pot already weighs 6.5 pounds because I've weighed it. So let's see, let's zero this scale out and see how many pounds this turns into. I wanna have 14 and a half pounds in total to do this recipe that I want to do. So let's see what this weighs all together, including the pot. Okay, so I forgot that this scale only goes to 11 pounds, so I had to get out my bigger scale. So let's put these beets on it and see how many pounds. I want to have at least 14.5. Oh, perfect. 15 and a bit. That will do. That's perfect. I can use that for the recipe. See a little string on that I want to get off. That should work good. So I'm gonna cover these in water and cook them until they're just tender crisp. Okay, so I've got all my beets in the pot. This is that favorite storefront pot. I'll leave a link below. It'll be in my Amazon storefront if you want to get this pot. It's so nice and heavy duty. I use it for everything to do with canning and other things too, but always with my canning stuff. So. I'm just going to put enough water to cover a couple inches over top of the beets and put it on medium high until they're about tender crisp. And then I'm just going to let them cool in this water. If you go ahead and drain your beets before you let them cool, make sure to set a few cups of the beet juice, like about three, aside for using in the jars. So the beets have come to like a tender cook and I've drained them all and I did not rinse them. I don't like to rinse them and I saved some beet juice to mix in with the brine. So I'm going to pour these into another bowl, my stainless steel bowl, and start making the brine now that I washed the pot that the beets were in and then we can start filling our jars. I'm going 
gonna get all these beads in my bowl. Wow, those look beautiful. So what I do for my lids is I use these, and I don't know how many drawers I'll have. I think I'll just start with one, two, three, four, five, a few. And then just put enough water to cover it. And then I'm going to just slowly put that to a simmer. And then I can add more if I need to. So to make the brine, I'm going to... Oh, there's a beet. I'm gonna grab that out. That's funny. There might be another one then. I'm gonna grab my two things of brine. Or actually, it's just beet juice. But I'm gonna double this batch of, of brine that I'm making, just so that I have extra. And then I've got my white vinegar. And I'll grab my salt and I'm just going to use pink Himalayan salt and some sugar. There we go. That's all you need. It's super, super simple. So I'm just going to grab my measuring cup and get everything put together. Normally I do four cups of sugar, but I'm gonna only use three today. Cut back a little bit. Now I'm gonna bring this to a boil and I'm going to stir so that I know that that sugar is all melted. And when this comes to a boil, I'm just going to let it simmer for a couple minutes. So while that is coming to a boil, I want to get this. First, I have to get this tea kettle out of the way. Stay over there. Get my canning water bag cooker on high so I gotta get this water boiling so I've got this raised up so I can easily get the jars in and I've only got about one third of little over one third of water and I'm gonna have that lid on so that it boils quicker and I can feel the sugar in this so it's not quite warm yet and behind here because these pots are so big uh, my lids are boiling, so I'm going to turn, which burner is that? This one. Those off now. And they're going to be good enough to go. I've got to find my little magnet thing. I have a little magnet that comes with a canning set that I dip in there to pull up the lid, so i got to find that. I'm going to add one of these quart jars 
of water to finish up my brine now that it's the sugar is melting. And then I'm gonna wait until this is all simmering and I'm gonna taste it just to make sure that it's not too sweet and not too salty. So now, well, everything is coming to a boil, I'm gonna pack these jars full of beets. But I want to make sure that I leave at least this much space for the brine. You want to have at least that much head space. So, but I want to pack it down so that there's no big holes. Let's see if I can show you better. I pack them tightly in there. I'm leaving about that much head space for brine. There's no big, huge holes where the beets are, but not too full that I have to worry about them popping off the lid. So just like that. Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen jars. So I have to make sure I have thirteen seals and thirteen rings. They all look beautiful. So what I want to do now, I'm gonna make sure I have thirteen of these to go put in my little pot of boiling water and just to warm up the seal, but I need to so you can see. There's a little bit on the edge that I slopped over, so I need to get a warm rag that's clean and wipe all the rings of these jars before I do anything. But first we have to add the brine. Okay, so I have my brine here. Nice and warm, and I have all my packed jars, and I have this little handy tool that helps me have good aim. And that's why we're not going to wipe the edge of the rings of the jar until we've got our brine in there. So I hope I have enough. I think I should. So I'm just going to use a ladle and gently fill up all of my jars and I did taste it by the way taste delish so the final result is um, not going to be exact because I am using well actually it will be because I used about um, 8.5 pounds of beets but I'm using different size jars because I like this size jar for family dinners and I like the small ones for like personal opening up but when we have like a big Thanksgiving or Christmas I like to open up one of those bigger jars so it's nice so yeah we're gonna fill it up so that the jar is less than less fluid than below the lowest ring so never fill it any more than that you can even put a little less if you prefer. So I'm just going to fill all of my jars and then the next step will be to pop them in the canner.
How good do those look? Yum. So good. I love beets. Okay. So I've got all the brine to approximately right there on each one. That one may be a little higher, but most of them right just below the line. So now is when you want to get out a clean, damp rag with hot water on it and wipe the entire edge so that the seal will seal completely. Some people like to use vinegar. I've never needed to. Mine always usually seal. No matter what I'm making, even with the sticky jam and stuff, I've never used vinegar. I do sometimes. I shouldn't say that years ago. But now, lately I haven't. And I haven't had any problems. So I'm just going to wipe the rims of this and get the seals put on. I told you it would be super easy. It's time a little bit time consuming, but definitely not hard. So now you just want to take out all of your seals. And, oh, that's a little warm. Oh, that's warm. I couldn't find my little magnet thing that I always use, so I don't know what I did with it. Oh, maybe it's in here. No. Shoot. I don't know what I did with it, but it's my favorite little magnet that picks up these leads, but that's okay. We do what we gotta do around here. These look so pretty. Oh, that's warm. Now I just want to put these. Oh, oops. I don't want to do that. I want to just. It's called finger tight, not screw on this too, too tight, but properly. Just enough so that we can get an airlock. This ring seems bent, so I'm gonna throw that one away. I only want to use ones that are straight, so I can ensure I'm gonna get a proper seal. So I need two, four, six. Oh, I got that one. So let's see, six more from my magic can drawer. I always keep stuff up here so I don't have to run down to the basement. It might be like one short. We'll see. I have a drawer up here that I keep organized with just lids, jars, seal, or lid seals. Things to, related to canning, which is why it's funny that I can't find my favorite little tool. Okay, I gotta go down and get one more ring. Okay, now it's time for the fun part. I don't have my water blazing, super boiling at this point because my jars are not super hot, much very warm right now. So I only want the water warm while I put them in. Otherwise my jars will crack. So, I'm just going to do one batch first of these smaller jars and then I'll do the last batch. So that'll be perfect of just enough for two rounds. I like to drop my jars right down into the boiling water while it's coming to a boil to prevent the jars from breaking. So just in case my jars are not boiling hot and I've got it about medium high, I'm going to bring that to a slow boil and then I'm going to put the timer on for 10 minutes. It's actually super handy that this batch made this amount of jars because I've got three, six, seven in here, and I've got six sitting here for the next batch. So that's exactly two canners full. And that makes me happy because and I it's really difficult when you only have one left and you have to run the 
counter back up to boiling and do it. It's kind of annoying, but this worked out super perfect and I had lots of brine left over. And I'd always rather have brine to dump down the sink than rather to run out and have to make more. The next thing I do is I use my butcher block because it can't get stained or ruined or anything really. Nothing can really do too much to it. So I get an old cruddy towel that I have and I lay that down so I can put the jars onto something a little softer when they come out of the canner. And it just makes me feel better that they're on a soft surface while they're cooling. So I do that while I'm waiting. And now I think I'm gonna go get the rest of these dishes done while the canner comes to a boil. I just got everything somewhat cleaned up, but guess what? I'm gonna leave this out now that it's all clean because my husband just went over to his brother's to pick me up some apples. So I'm really excited about that. I might just leave this out and get right into making applesauce. Which, if you haven't seen, I have another video where I made applesauce, but I might even make another one. But I'll link that below to this video, just in case I change my mind. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to show you this, this spots here where I had a canning jar that was, I thought they were cool and they weren't. And it left this kind of this white ring. So this has just got bead stuff on it I need to bleach. But that's why I put the towel down on our butcher block here, like an old towel. Even though this, like I showed you, it's kind of well worn, I just still like to do that. And I had a towel over here at, when this happened. And they were way more obvious. There was like 10 jars there. So I'm just waiting on the water to boil and then I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes. Let's see. Oh, it's actually hot. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a good full rolling boil once the bubbles start coming to the top like that. So I'm just going to put it, turn it down to medium and put my timer on for 10 minutes. That's all it takes. I'm going to put the lid back on completely. Maybe I won't put it that low, but medium high. And then once those come out, I'm going to take those out and put these guys in. Can you hear them? They're already sealing. I just heard ping, 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 ping. That's so exciting. Okay, so now I need my handy gadget. I call it my canning picker upper thing. So this keeps me from getting burned. Always hold underneath your jar. Don't carry it like this in case your thing slips. You don't want to drop boiling hot anything near your legs or your feet. These look so good. There's kind of like a weird film on the jar. That's because of our hard water and on the lid, but it'll, it's just dusty and it will wipe right off. So now let's get these other ones into the canner and bring it slowly back up to temperature. Now I want to have it quite low because these jars have been sitting and the brine was quite boiling hot, but just in case it got a little more cooler, cooling down than I wanted, I never want my jars to break. So I'm just gonna put these in there on low and let them sit for a few minutes before I start bringing them up to a boil. So there you go, friends. I have just taken out the last of them and look how beautiful they look and remember do not overcook them in the beginning because you want you don't want them soggy i still like them like tender firm so they look super nice 
so beautiful very pleased with those and as you can see they're still bubbling inside and that is the reason that you do not want to fill it too full so less is more so there you go i hope that you enjoy making your own beet pickles pickled beets beet pickles and remember leave them here for at least like eight at ten hours before you move them they like let everything let everything let the seals seal let them cool on their own don't move them around there's still boiling hot fluid inside and i hope you enjoy i'd love to hear your comments on what the flavor is because they're quite mild which is how i like them and yeah let me know how your beet making goes happy canning friends don't forget to like this video and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.